Hi everyone, this is Math 6, Topic 2, Integers and Rational Numbers. In this topic, we'll be able to think about what integers and rational numbers are and how the points graphed on a coordinate plane are um, done. So let's look at topic overview. You can see that there are six lessons in this topic. We're going to start by understanding integers. And we'll look through rational numbers on the number line, absolute values of rational numbers, representing rational numbers on the coordinate plane, finding distances on the coordinate plane, representing polygons on the coordinate plane. So we'll deal with a lot of graphing and coordinate planes um, in this topic. Topic vocabularies that you'll see here will be absolute value, coordinate plane, integers, opposites, ordered pair, origin, quadrant, rational number, x and y axes. Um, let's start with reviewing what you should know um, before we start this topic. If you look at review what you know, the get ready part, you'll start with reviewing the vocabulary. You should know these vocabularies and many others, but these are the key vocabularies you should know for this topic. So if you don't know, please review again and make sure you know them. Let's look at uh, number one. A blank names part of a whole, part of a set, or a location on a, on a number line. What names part of a whole, part of a set, or a location on a number line? It's all about that part. Is it a decimal? Is it a denominator, fraction, numerator? Fractions, usually, uh, we'll talk about the parts. Okay, fraction names part of a whole, part of a set, or a location on a number line. The number above the fraction bar that represents the part of the whole is, so on the fraction, what is the number on top? What is it called? Is it the denominator or is it the numerator? The number that is on top, so for example, 1 over 2, on top, 1 is the numerator. And the number below the fraction bar that represents the total number of equal parts in one whole is the denominator. And you should definitely know what decimal is. What is a decimal? Decimal is a number that is represented by using decimal point and digits after that. Okay, so one half is a fraction form. Decimal form of one half would be 0 0.5. Okay, now that we've uh, reviewed our vocabularies that we should know, um, let's review our math skills, fractions and decimals, divisions with decimals and order pairs. Um, please see if you can solve them by yourself. If you can't, you need to go back and review all of these before we start topic two. So see if you can do it by yourself, and we'll check um, the answers together and move on. Okay, are you ready? So number four. Two over five is a fraction. How do you write fraction as a decimal? What does a fraction bar represent? Your fraction bar, numerator, denominator, this represents that you divide numerator by denominator, right? So in order to write 2 over 5 as a, fra as a decimal, you literally divide 2 by 5. So 2 divided by 5, 0 0.4. So number 4 in decimal is 0 0.4, okay? And in the same way, number 5 should be 0 0.75. 6 should be 2.5, 5 number, and number 7 should be 2.4, number 8 should be 0 0.6, number 9 should be 5.0.
Division with decimals. Divide decimal numbers. How do you divide decimal numbers? The same rules apply for decimals as it is for whole numbers. So what do you do with the decimals um, in your divisor? So dividend is this, 1.25. Divisor is 0 0.5. And what you get is the solution. And you ha if you have remainders, that's the remainder, right? So divisor needs to be a whole number. So you're going to move the uh, decimal point in your divisor one unit, one digit to the right, right? So that means you also have to move this. So you have 5 divided by 12.5, and that's the same as 1.25 divided by 0 0.5. Okay, and then you're going to start dividing. 5 goes into 12 two times, and you have a remain you have remainder of 0, but you want to divide until you, you get all the digits. Um, okay, so 5 comes down. And then make sure you put a decimal point here. 5 times 5 is 25, and you have a remainder of 0 when you have a solution of 2.5. There you go. So in the same way, number 11 should be 20, and number 12 should be 30.5. If you got anything incorrect, please go back and check your answer and steps and see if you can get the right answer. All right, let's look for ordered pairs. Write the ordered pair for each point shown on the graph. Um, do you know how to write the ordered pair? Ordered pair, in another word, is a point. It's a coordinate point, OK? And it has a form x comma y. So you need to have a number for x. You need to have a number for y, and that gives you a specific coordinate point for that uh, ordered pair. So j will have x equals to 4 and y equaling 3. So your j has a coordinate point of 4, comma 3. OK, number 14. k will have a point coordinate point of 0, comma 5. L will have an ordered pair of 6, 8. Um, M will have a, um, the ordered pair of 7, 1. Okay, make sure your X values come first and your Y values come later. And if, you're, and if you forgot or if you haven't learned how to write ordered pair, please go back and review. Um, plotting each point on the coordinate plane. A has a coordinate point of 6, 2. So you find 6 on the x-axis because 6 is the value for the x-coordinate. So you find 6 here. 6 is right here. And then 2 for the y is right here. So the only point that has a 6 uh, as a x value and 2 as the y value would be this point, right? And then you label A. Okay, in the same way, B should be 1, 3 right here. That's B. C should be 5, 7 right here. And D should be 3, 4. Okay, double check your points. See if they're all accurate. Okay, um, and the last part. Let's say that the quotient of 3.9 divided by 0 0.75 is 0 0.52. Explain how you know less is incorrect without completing the division. Hmm. And before you even compute it out, how would you know if this is incorrect? You can estimate them, right? 3.9 uh, is close to what whole number? 4. And 0 0.75 is close to 1. 4 divided by 1 is 4. So it, it is not even close to the answer he got, right? So um, less is way off. It's going to be, it has to be close to the estimate. 
So let's write that down in words. Okay, so you can say that um, we can use the estimation to determine that 3.9 divided by 0 0.75 is close to 4 divided by 1 because 4 divided by 1 is 4, the quotient of 3.9 divided by 0 0.75 is about 4. And Les's answer of 0 0.52 is not close to the estimate. All right, so if you got all of these answers correct, good job. You are ready to learn a new topic. And if you see anything that is confusing or you still haven't figured it out, please make sure you are ready for this topic. You need to know all these skills before we start topic two so that you better understand what we're talking about. All right, on the next page, we're going to have graphing organizers to help you um, visualize these vocabularies. We see the three main vocabularies um, on, of numbers here. We got integers, rational numbers, and opposites. We're going to categorize um, these. We're going to categorize numbers into these three um, well, these two different categories, the opposites are, are negatives or positives. So let's, let's talk about these vocabularies. So what does, what do integers mean? What are integers? So we're going to write a definition on top. We're going to write some key characteristics and then some examples and non-examples. Okay, so integers, if you look at page 70 in your textbook, you will see the definition for the integer. Um, the integers are the counting numbers, their opposites, and zero. And the key characteristics would be that they could be, you know, they have to be um, counting numbers. Like you can't be decimals, you can't be fractions, no decimal no fraction, um, includes zero, includes negative number. Okay, examples could be negative two, um, zero, and two. They're all integers. Non-examples, what are, what are some numbers that are not integers? So if they're not counting numbers, like a fraction, 0 0.5 or 1 half, they are not integers, okay? Negative 3 over 4, not an integer. It has to be a counting number. Whole number, negative uh, whole numbers. So opposites of the whole numbers, because whole numbers are only positive, and 0. They're all part of the group integers. Okay, what about rational numbers? Rational numbers, you can find the definition on page 76. Rational numbers are any number that could be written as the quotient of two integers. So it needs to be able to be written as a fraction. Okay, and the key characteristics of rational numbers, obviously, would be that they have to be fraction. Okay, so if they have a fraction form of n as a numerator over d, um, then they're rational numbers. There are some numbers that cannot be written as fractions, and they are not rational numbers, but we can talk about that later. Okay, examples, 1 over 2, Four, is that a rational number? If it can be written as a fraction, that is a rational number. What is a fraction form of a whole number? Well, you can divide it by one and get itself, right? Four over one is equal to four. So all whole numbers and integers are rational numbers, okay? Negative numbers are rational numbers. Decimals are rational numbers. 
So there are a lot of numbers that fit into this category. What are non-examples? What are not rational numbers? Well, you learn more about irrational numbers later on, but there are some numbers like pi that cannot be written as a fraction, as an exact fraction, right? Um, also, um, decimals that do not have a pattern, or even if they do have a pattern, uh, they do not have a repeating, the same digits of repeating, uh, repeated, right? So for example, 0 0.12345 dot, 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 dot. It does have a pattern. You can see that uh, the digits are getting bigger and bigger, right? But it's not repeating. There's no repeated di repeating digits, and it goes on forever. Those type of decimals you cannot write as a fraction. So that is not a rational number. And a lot of square roots will have uh, decimals like these. So like square root of 2, square root of 3. They are not a whole number, but if they could be a whole number, like square root of 9, which is equal to 3, that is a rational number. Okay, we can talk more about square roots later on. But these are some examples and non-examples of rational numbers. Let's look at the opposites. What are the opposites of a number? Opposites, if you look back on page 70, are numbers that are located on opposite sides of zero and are the same distance from zero on a number line, which means four. If it's a positive four, what number is on the opposite side of zero on the number line that has the same distance as a positive four? Yeah, negative four will have to have the same distance away from zero um, and it's on the opposite side uh, of uh, positive 4 on the number line. So let's write the definition and some examples. What are some key characteristics of opposites? A lot of times, well, most of the time, well, all the time, they will be paired with a positive number and a negative number. So examples... So paired with positive or negative, right? So example, negative 4 and 4 are opposites. Negative 10 and 10 are opposites. Do you see what I mean? If you know absolute value, the absolute value of these numbers, of the opposites, must be the same number, okay? The same distance away from 0. Okay. Non-examples, what are some non-examples of opposites? Well, 2 and negative 5, they're not opposites. They don't have, it, have the same distance away from 0. 2 and 4, they're not opposites. They don't have the same distance away from 0, and they're not on the opposite side um, from uh, on, on zero on the number line as well. So it needs to be a different side on the number line and it has to be the same distance away from zero. Okay? All right, these are the key vocabularies. Key vocabularies you need to know for this topic. Um, so let's start with lesson one in the next video.